Good morning. It's raining. What a shame. I have been very nicely treated today to lunch and drinks and driving range balls and the course manager has given me uh, courtesy of the course. Um, I'm playing with Neil who's a subscriber. I'm sure you will have seen him in the comments and he's treated me to everything today. I've been He's even bought me a dozen balls, for goodness sake. So, um, we're due out in about 20 minutes. We're going to play odds and evens. So I'm going to play the odds, Neil's going to play the evens. And, um, I'm really looking forward to this. The greens are quick. Although with this stuff coming down, probably takes some of the fire out of them, so... I just hope it stops. We're off in, say, about 20 minutes, so... This, this could be one of my most miserable videos but I'm itching to get out there it looks absolutely gorgeous and it's USGA greens and um, we'll do the best we can in the rain without this thing uh, I hope this doesn't go back right take two so we've had about an hour and 10 minutes wait for the rain to go. The greens, um, they had an awful lot of water on them, but uh, they've cleared now and off we go. And I've been treated like a king today. Neil hasn't let me put my hand in my pocket at all. The club's given me uh, a courtesy of the course. So um, we better make a decent video. Although, because we got wet hanging around the first tee, we're, we're quite chilled. So, uh, first tee shot might not be very pretty. Come on, Simon, switch on. Welcome to Hulston Hall. The first thing I noticed was all of the planting and all of the bits and pieces that make a golf course a little bit special. The pathways, the fencing, the hedging round the tea boxes, all that sort of thing. Shame about the first tea shot. Bugger. That's a very familiar hard pull off the first tea that I do when I'm cold, which is why I warm up before the round, but we did warm up before the round. We just got delayed by an hour or so. Yes, just hope for the best down here and see if I can squeeze out a bogey. So the first hole's a little awkward with the fairway bunkers. I was planning to hit my usual fade over the right hand fairway bunker and, um, well, it didn't quite come off properly. Now I forgot to tell the camera how far I had to go, or how far Neil had to go, or what clubs we were using, so we're a little bit short of information. A quick list of the facilities here. They've got archery. They've got a five-a-side football pitch. They've got cottages for rent. They've got an immaculate caravan park. They've got a huge carp lake, which is very well planted. They've got the gym and the spa. In the pro shop, they've got a studio for fitting and for lessons. They've got the driving range with an outside studio. The amount of investment here is huge. Pair of sixes. We managed a pair of sixes. So we, we did rush out straight after the uh, after the, the rain stopped. Right, so I put Neil behind the eight ball with a double bogey. Neil's hole. What have we got? Par three. At 155 and it's back up the hill a little bit. Someone left a ball out there from 
prior to... I think someone's left a ball on there after the rain. Well, it's on. That's, that's the difficulty with the three-quarter shot though, isn't it? Yeah. This second hole is quite a nice par three, just over a lake, which isn't really in play. The ball we thought we saw on the green was in fact a nearest the pin marker. As you can see, the greens are draining, which after all that rain is amazing. And this is me putting in for the par, so redeem myself a little bit after the first hole. Yeah, if you want give that's, good if that's good for the short hole anyway. I know, just for your score, for your keeping score. You know, on the left. Third is a fairly straightforward par four. Now there's a pond in front of the green, but there's plenty of space between the edge of it and the green itself. So it's only a wedge in, so there was nothing really to be worried about. In fact, I think I only had about 85, 87 yards here. Well, we're both suffering a little bit from rushing out of the bar to the car, get the gear out, which is still wet from our first attempt. So there's a few wet gloves and a few wet grips. This golf course is, um, don't want to blow smoke, but this is really nice. But the greens are very tricky, as you've seen. We've only been on two greens and we don't seem to be able to buy a putt. Well, that may well improve. Watching yours made me a little afraid there. Wow, wow, wow. There is some heat in these leaves and there you go, it's rain. I wish I could take the damn flag out. The hole looks full to me. I don't know how I'm going to get the ball in. The fourth is a little dog leg to the left. And Neil hits the absolutely Stop. perfect draw. That's a peach. I shove mine a little bit to the right and into one of the fairway bunkers. Hello. Ah, we got a bit split up there, left and right, so I didn't get Neil's second shot. He's on the dance floor though. I found the fairway bunker, so if I come back, I think I'll hit three wood off that tee. Go on, go, 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 go. What a putt! What a player! Fifth is a dog leg to the right. Now, Neil said to me that I had to go at the bush in the middle of the, f of the screen there because there's a water hazard on the right. But I just thought, I'm going to lean on this a bit and give it some beef.
hope it's long enough. Sure. I think we're both warming up now. We're starting to hit some decent shots. Greens are incredibly difficult. I'd hate to think how fast they would be if we hadn't have had that downpour. But they're very big greens, so you've got to hit to the correct portion of the green. I think I just did. Yeah, I think it's off the right, yeah. Too much, too much. That's good. Textbook for all them, absolutely tapping for. Six is a short par five. Now we both agreed that if we hadn't have had the downpour, we would have been hitting three wood here. Now this is just a little bit of a Don't tug. Get away. Get lucky. And it took us a quite a while to find it because we were looking in the wrong place. But it hit it a very long way. It wasn't far off being in the ditch. Yeah, carry on. I was sent a fair way. And we both ended up with birdie putts. Oh, that's a, that is an ex excellent ball. Right up in the throat of the green. It's got about 40 yards here. Yeah? Same as me, a little bit short. I think we both went under it a bit with the soft ground. The strange thing here Neil gets his five and he's forgotten that we found wow. his ball. He thought um, they do slide away. That he chucked one down because uh, as we couldn't find his ball, it was, oh, I'll just throw one down. Then we walked forward and there was his ball. As I say, we were looking in the wrong place. Good five. Well, it was a uh, lost ball, wasn't it? So. Found it. Oh, of course it did. Yeah. That's a great roll. That's good. Number seven is another delightful par three. There's a tree in the way. Well, it's sort of semi in the way, you go over the top of it. Exactly as described. I think from the competition tee it is more of an issue. A bit short. And Neil said when they put the flag well, back right up on that shelf, then it is a difficult hole and it's worthy of its stroke index. But as it's down the front here, it was very easy for both of us and we, we walked off with a pair of pars. Quite nice. Just a little pop with a sand wedge and a tap in. Number eight is an absolute crackerjack of a par five. Just need a little draw off the tee. Well, that's the drive. And then you're faced with going over a pond ball with a long club. It's a great par, f par five, this is. Well, I've hit down the right. Neil is in the middle. He's got about 238. I can't see the green from here. He's got out his three wood. Now he's only just bought this. Literally only just bought this the last 10 days. I think we're waiting for somebody. So he's going over the pond. There's a big, big pond between us and the green. And it's off and running. And it's at the green. About 10, 15 yards shy of the green. That's a good hit. 
bit away from the action here. Just crept on the front, which is fine. It's the front flag. Got about 15 feet. In fact, we both have. You get my pitch marker. <laughs> Minimum wage. I can't afford that. <laughs> Go on, go on. Oh. It's a good five. Yeah, take that. Fantastic offer. Not bad for an old man. <laughs> Makes up for the opening six, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Number nine. Ooh, well, she'd have left a teeth leg behind. Bit of a dog leg to the left and over a drainage ditch to a green in front of the clubhouse. This is quite a demanding tee shot because there's a pair of fairway bunkers down there to catch you out. And in fact, because Neil drives it further than me, he drove it into that right hand bunker. Oh, I wasn't happy here. You know, how many times do we get over the golf ball and we think, that's not right, and we hit it anyway and make a mess of it? Well, I stood back and had a proper go at it. Yep, it's your now for the second shot, I managed to convince myself to hit an eight iron instead of a seven. I should have hit the seven. I get on the dance floor but I'm some distance away from the flag. But that's a wonderful view. Wonderful view so for the ninth hole. All I got was an eight, but you've got an uphill cup then. Uh, just the back this Fantastic ninth hole. <laughs> 